Okay, so for the first part of these slides, um, we talked about some of the basics of ultrasound. And then we left off at the notion of reflection and transmission. Um, so we talked about such notions as the signal moving through a medium, hitting a boundary and reflecting back um, where that signal will have a velocity through that medium um, and will have a distance that's traveled and it will travel in a specific time frame. So all of these um, different variables are also dependent on the uh, reflection and transmission properties of different boundaries and different materials. So this is what we're going to talk about in this next section. So when an ultrasound wave encounters a tissue surface, a fraction of the wave is backscattered and detected by the transducer upon return. Generally, only the waves that reflect back through about 180 degrees can contribute to an ultrasound image. By measuring the delay between pulse transmission and pulse reception, and knowing the speed of propagation, the depth of a feature can be calculated. Um, the intensity of the echo is used to determine the brightness of the image at the reflecting tissue surface. So here we can see that we have um, uh, our pulses coming in and we can see that we have two different tissues here. So we've got tissue one and tissue two, and then there's a boundary in between. Um, at the point at which this signal hits this boundary, some of that signal is transmitted through to tissue two and some of that signal is reflected back through tissue one. In both cases, um, the, the signal encounters attenuation. So reflection and refraction at plane interfaces. So if we have two different medias here, medium one and medium two, where the frequencies are equal in each of the two media, medias. The wave number components are parallel to the interface are equal. So that satisfies the boundary condition. So here we can see a plane wave that's incident upon a plane interface with an incidence angle of theta i. So that's this one right here. The reflected and transmitted wave directions will obey the laws of geometric optics. So here, that means that theta i and theta r are equal. And we can see that reflected in this equation here. Um, then we also have the notion that k1 sine theta i is equal to k2 sine theta t, so that's what's transmitted. If k in this instance is equal to 2 pi times the frequency over velocity, where we know that the frequencies are equal in each of the two mediums, then this whole top part becomes a constant and we can get rid of it. So if we fill um, this equation into this equation and rearrange it, we end up with these equations, uh, which is known as Snell's law. So sine of theta i over the velocity in i, so here, is equal to sine of theta t, so it's transmitted uh, divided by velocity 2. So again, as I just mentioned, the only the waves with normal incident and reflection, so at theta equals 0, can contribute to a true ultrasound image. pressure, reflection, and transmission coefficients. In longitudinal waves, the acoustic pressure is related to the underlying particle velocity. They are linearly related by the value of z, where z represents the acoustic impedance value. The term impedance is used because it's considered analogous to electric circuits, um, where acoustic pressure can be considered analogous to voltage, and particle speed can be considered analogous to current. Acoustic impedance is a constant for a specific material and is analogous to electrical impedance. As impedance increases, it inhibits the velocity or the current for a given pressure or voltage. 
So here we have our acoustic impedance. So Z is equal to uh, P times V. So that's going to be pressure uh, times the velocity. Um, here you can see a comparison to what we have looked at before. So electromagnetic waves. So Z is equal to mu C, where mu is magnetic permeability. Um, C is the speed of light. Um, and that has an additional um, definition right there, as does this one here. Um, and here you can see if we're considering two different mediums. So we have medium one, medium two, and then we have, accordingly, we have Z1 and Z2, where Z1 is equal to the pressure times the velocity of medium one, and Z2 is equal to the pressure times the velocity of medium two. So we can describe um, essentially the pressure reflection coefficient, so how much pressure is reflected versus um, the incident pressure, and then how much pressure is transmitted versus the incident pressure. So that's the pressure transmission coefficient. So we can actually get values for the pressure reflection coefficient and the pressure transmission coefficient by using these impedance values. So the equations for which are here for reflection, of course, and here for transmission, where transmission is going to equal 1 plus R. These are ratios, so they're bounded generally um, between negative 1 and 0 or 1 and 0. Okay, so here we have pressure reflection and transmission. So if we're considering waves that are going into two different mediums again, there are some different effects. So here we have our pressure reflection and transmission equations again. So we have our R and then we have our T. Where again, our R is representative of the uh, ratio between the reflected pressure versus the incident pressure, and T is going to be the transmitted pressure versus the incident pressure. And then we have the associated equations right next to them, where again, T is equal to 1 plus R. So that the reason that holds true is because of the boundary condition. So the boundary condition means that there has to be a continuity of pressure. So the incident pressure plus the reflective reflected pressure equals the transmitted pressure. Um, so that does seem strange, um, as though conservation of energy was being violated. However, both wave amplitude and wave velocity determine the time rate of flow of energy at the interface. So that's where the, where the rate of flow of energy is going to be uh, synonymous to power. So in terms of power, there should be a net balance. Um, and that's where we get this continuity of pressure equation. Um, so here, if we have our medium one and medium two, we have an incident wave that's coming in here. Um, and of course, it reaches this boundary here, where Z1, in this case, is less than Z2. So here, if we know that Z1 is going to be less than Z2, and we consider this equation here, we know that Z2 minus Z1 is going to be a positive value. So then we also know that because this is a ratio, we know it's going to be bounded by 0. So essentially, there are there is no reflection. So 0 and then 1, so 100% reflection. Here, if we then know the bounds of R, we also know the bounds of T. So if we consider this equation T equals 1 plus R, we then know if R is 0, T is 1, and if R is 1, then T is 2. So we know that, the, that this is bounded here by 1 and 2. 
Um, so when this wave does hit this boundary, it does reflect back to some degree. If there's a difference in these impedances, there will always be some transmission and some reflection. It does reflect back in a constructive manner. Because this is constructive, it actually ends up amplifying this transmitted pressure. So I'll have a better example of that in, in just a second. Um, so if we move to this other example where Z1 is going to be greater than Z2, so the impedance here is greater than the impedance here, and we go back to our equation for R, if we know that Z2 is going to be less than Z1, then Z2 minus Z1 is going to be, this whole term is going to be negative. So then, again, we know that we're dealing with a ratio here, so it's going to be bounded by negative 1. So again, 100% reflection, but in the opposite, uh, with a phase shift here. So it's going to be destructive, not constructive. And then it's also going to be bounded by 0. And again, if we consider this range as compared to our equation up here, we know that if um, R is negative 1, then T is going to be 0. And then we know if R is 0, then T is going to be 1. So T here is bounded by 0 and 1. So here, this is an example, again, as I mentioned, of a destructive type of reflection. So it's going, this incident wave is going to hit this boundary, some is going to be reflected, some is going to be transmitted. However, um, the way that this pressure is reflected, um, it actually decreases the amplitude um, and I guess the power of this transmitted pressure. So there is a better example of this that I'm going to pull up. 